Hello everyone and welcome to Muddy Beards 4x4. I am Robbie and today we're going to be working on trying to diagnose an engine knock on a Chrysler 4.7 liter V8 engine out of this 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ. Now just a little bit of background information for those of you that do not follow the channel. I recently just picked up a pretty good condition 2001 Grand Cherokee. I've always wanted one but I got it really cheap because I knowingly knew that it had some sort of internal engine problem. And I posted a video about it and man, I can say you all are awesome. I got flooded with uh, emails and DMs and people commenting on the video, giving me all sort of advice on what to look for. And I think I've kind of narrowed down my search, but um, this engine does turn over and does run. It just runs terribly. It's clearly misfiring and again, it has an audible knock. Now, I think based upon what everybody told me and just sort of what I think it is, I think this is probably a valve train issue. And so I want to start getting into this engine to try and diagnose what the issue could be because apparently these 4.7 engines were pretty darn notorious for having valve train issues. Anything from just spitting the rocker arms to probably the most common issue, which is valve seat failure. And if that valve seat fails, the valve can no longer properly seal. You're gonna have no compression in that hole and probably gonna have an audible knock because there's gonna be metal things hitting each other that shouldn't be. So I'm gonna start off by jumping into this thing, trying to take apart as least amount as I can to start, but I may end up getting really into this thing, taking off valve covers, maybe even taking off the cylinder head to try to figure out what is wrong with this engine. So let's check it out. So I wanna go ahead and begin this diagnosis process by doing a simple compression check. So this is just a really simple um, engine compression test kit um, that you know, everybody should have one of these. But what you do is you're just gonna to have to remove the uh, coil packs here and I will have to remove the uh, spark plug. Now I'm gonna start on the passenger side of this engine because it sounds to me like the knock is on this side. So I'm gonna begin on this bank. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull each spark plug down the row. And when you do that, instead what you do is you thread in this gauge and then go ahead and disconnect like the fuel pump or something because you don't want this thing trying to start over uh, when, you're, when you're testing this. And then you'll go ahead and crank it over. And what you'll see is the needle will actually crank up and build pressure as long as that cylinder is holding pressure. So this will be a good tool to find out if I indeed have a valve seat failure and there's a valve dropped, that hole's not gonna have any compression. This would be a good way to find it. Um, these are also really good for finding like uh, head gasket brakes and some other things. So this is a really simple tool that you should all own. I actually bought this one on Amazon. Um, I'll put a link in the description if you wanna get your own because it's just a nice tool to have around. So let's pull this spark plug, get this thing in here, start cranking it over and try to figure out which cylinder we're having an issue with. Thank you. 
Well, I went ahead and ran my compression check on each piston and well, all of them check out. I have anywhere between 160 and 170 PSI and every single hole, I did not have a single cylinder that had zero compression. And uh, honestly, this kind of looks like the signs of a healthy motor. My numbers do vary a little bit, but uh, you know, as long as they're within 15%, um, this rarity is kind of normal. So. Um, take your highest number of 170 and if you times that by 0.15 or 15 percent it's 25.5 so if i took 170 and subtracted 25.5 what does it get me roughly 145 um and my lowest number is 160 so i'm i'm oh definitely okay and so that tells me that i i have a healthy motor here and that this knock probably isn't a valve seat so i may have eliminated the valve seat um, but i'm still not sure but either way it looks like i'm gonna have to get dirty now um, i'm gonna have to start taking off some uh some of the covers here i'm gonna start with the valve covers so um the knock sounds like it's on the passenger side so i'm gonna try to get this passenger side valve cover off this one looks like there's a, a few things you're gonna have to remove i may need to remove the uh, ac compressor here maybe even this oil fill uh like cap um, once I do that, I might be able to push away some of these um, lines and stuff, and then it looks like it's going to be a little bit more accessible. The bolts don't look terrible um, to access, except for these ones on the very, very, very back. Um, and then on the driver's side, it looks a lot easier to do, but we need to get these valve covers off and see if we can find anything else. So we better get to it. It was starting to get kind of dark and cold last night, so I decided to wait to the next day to show you this. I did manage to get this valve cover removed and check this out. So I'm hoping to get in here and you can see that but this right here that is the rocker arm just sitting right inside of the cylinder head so this right here 100 percent is my problem and hopefully no further diagnosis is needed so this is certainly the reason why this engine was running terribly um, you can see the lifter here um, this I believe is an exhaust lobe so I'm assuming that this thing could not vent and that is a hundred percent the reason why you know this thing um, was running so terribly um, and it would explain why I had good compression um, yet there was still this knocking noise in here so I think I actually might have gotten pretty darn lucky um, I don't I'm trying to see if you can get in here and actually see it but this right here is the top of the valve stem so if this indeed was a failed valve seat what I should see is that valve stem right here should be visibly lower um, and it would be probably very obvious um, that it was lower um, which would be an indication that it was one of the other big issues with these motors which is the valve seat failure but I this looks good my valve spring looks good, which I heard those can be broken um, sometimes when you have those issues. And I'm not seeing any of those problems. So 
Um, I think I got pretty lucky and no further, like I don't have to get further into this engine. I don't see any like damage to the camshaft or to the rocker arm or anything. So I think I got pretty lucky here. Now, while I think I got very lucky here and this rocker arm appears to be the only thing that has popped off and everything looks pretty good, I'm pretty happy. I think I might've got myself a heck of a deal here, but I really wanted to figure out why these things kick off these rocker arms or these fulcrums because it appears to be a pretty common issue with these 3.7 and 4.7 um, liter Chrysler V8 engines. and. I reached out to a few people, did a lot of reading on the internet, and it seems it comes down to a couple things. Um, and one could be poor oiling, just kind of a bad design. Um, if you can see here, the hole in this rocker arm, they actually updated this in the newer versions of these engines, and they made that hole smaller, okay? And um, that seems counterproductive, but I think what it actually does is increase the oil pressure and provides better oiling um, down into the uh, lifter. And so poor oiling, cold starts, maybe not changing the oil enough could be one of those reasons why this thing would kick off. But the other reason seems to be this. So this is the lifter or probably better known as a valve lash adjuster, but everybody just calls them um, lifters. Now, these are actually kind of cool because they're hydraulic and they self-adjust the valve lash, which is awesome in my opinion. No adjusting valves um, because it does it automatically using hydraulic pressure. That's great until it fails. So it seems that these lifters, again, due to poor oiling or just not changing oil enough or whatever it might be, two things can happen. One, they can collapse. There's like a, a spring mechanism and things inside of this, lip, this lifter and even no oil pressure, it's hydraulic, it's supposed to power it. If that spring collapses, this lifter can collapse. And as the rocker arm, you know, or the fulcrum is pushed by the valve, it's going to leave a gap in between the fulcrum and the lifter, which may make it kick out. At the very least, you're probably not gonna get the best compression of the valve. And so if these collapse, it's, you know, the valve's not gonna stay open long enough or won't open far, as far as it normally would, so you're probably at least gonna get really poor performance. When these things collapse, supposedly they're noisy. So a lot of people will say, well, I got lifter, you know, lifter noise in here. If they are, you should probably change them so this doesn't happen. The other thing that I can foresee would actually be the opposite, which is what I think happened to this one. Um, and I, I don't know, I can't tell exactly, but, I think what can also happen, again, poor oiling, not changing the oil, is the opposite. Instead, it seizes and essentially becomes a solid lifter um, that won't compress at all. And so as the cam loam is spinning and pushes down on this fulcrum and this valve does not compress, this has nowhere to go, the cam pushes down and it just simply pops off. Um, and that's what I think might've happened here. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that lifter um, they're pretty cheap. They're only like six bucks. I've been soaking it in this little Ziploc bag with oil for a while like they say they're supposed to. I'm going to go ahead and pop it right back in. They just slide right in. Um, I should be able to, uh, to uh, install this rocker arm pretty easily. You should just be able to slide them on there and just kind of pry them in with a screwdriver. There's lots of videos on YouTube showing that. I'm going to hook everything back up, change the oil, put a new valve cover gasket on, get everything back together, start this thing up and find out what happens. Fingers crossed, we diagnose this problem and this thing should run great.
Well, everyone, this is why you DIY. I've been driving this Jeep now around for the last couple of days and it is running great. No more knock, no more misfire. And I think it's safe to say that I successfully diagnosed and repaired one of the most common problems that these Chrysler 4.7 liter V8 engines had, which is kicking those rocker arms off. Now, I think I'm pretty lucky because it wasn't a further valve train issue like the valve guides, which I thought it might have been going into this project and is another common issue. Um, and also when it kicked that, that uh, rocket arm off, it did not do any damage. I mean, everything looked pretty good inside. So for a $6 lifter and a $20 valve cover gasket this thing is now running and driving and i got myself a great candidate um, for my family camping slash overlander rig so i couldn't be happier with the way that this all turned out for me perfect start for an awesome project so if you like the video make sure you give it a thumbs up leave a comment below if you have one about these four seven engines some of the repair stuff that you may have done to work on these things and until next time, we will see you on the trail.